Hi everybody, Jeremy here, climate correspondent at Euronews. We just had a really interesting discussion about what's happening in the Arctic and Antarctica, taking your questions, and as you can imagine, we did end up talking about the end of the world. It's about a fireworks of perturbations coming from all directions. But first off, this graphic from the Copernicus Climate Change Service showing just how little sea ice there is in the Arctic. Why? It's been a very warm year in the Arctic and it's been persistently warm for months and months and that warms up the sea. It makes it much harder for sea ice to form when the freezing uh, season comes back. But it's been a long-term problem. Before we get into any more detail, bear in mind that melting sea ice doesn't raise sea levels, but melting ice on land does raise sea levels. The Arctic is, a, is an ocean, right, surrounded by land, as Dave said, and, uh, the, and Antarctica is, a, is an island surrounded by an ocean. Right, now to the questions. And the first one is pretty provocative because it comes from somebody who might be a climate change skeptic. What is the scientific proof that the course is human made in modern days? Thanks for your response. Go on, Ruth. <laughs> it's amazing in 2020 we still get this question because the physics of climate change has been really well understood since the 1880s, really. The only way we can explain the observed warming already is by uh, looking at our increase in greenhouse gases uh, since the industrial period. If you want the complete answer, watch the full video. Question from Patrick Madser, who is asking whether we've passed the point of no return on major Antarctic glaciers such as Pine Island and Thwaites? The honest answer is we just don't know. We know in its system, and certainly in the Antarctic ice sheet, there is a tipping point that we would expect runaway collapse of the ice sheet to occur. But how close we are, or indeed whether we've exceeded that tipping point, really is not, uh, is not known at present. Angela Faye's asking how much is the thawing permafrost draining meltwater from the Siberian rivers into the Arctic Ocean uh, prevented the formation of sea ice? That's actually a really interesting question. Um, and the answer is no, because uh, fresh water, which we get from the, uh, the, the rivers from the Siberian um, areas, that, that freezes at a, a much higher temperature than salt water. So actually what we see in sort of climate simulations is where these rivers come out into the Arctic Ocean, that's some of the last remaining sea ice when we go to these higher temperature scenarios, just because that water is so fresh and it, it actually um, is a, easier to freeze than, than seawater. How utterly fascinating. What a, see, this is why I love my job. But now it's time for the end of the world discussion. No matter how hard we're trying to exterminate our own species, actually we won't manage it. We're not expecting a wave that'll, all, that'll kill us all. That's not what it is. But what we do need to understand is just how much sea level rise would actually affect our lives. The uh, effects of climate change, extreme weather, sea level rise, they will have a greater impact on already marginalised communities. The challenge of, cli of the climate change is really the perturbation of our societies and the conflicts that arise from there. So what do the experts say we should do to avoid these catastrophic situations? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions quickly, straight away. That's what we have to do. Completely. To see the full answers to all of those sceptical questions, click on the video here and then like and subscribe down there. See you next time.